let me tell you a spooky story of Arlo. Who's Arlo? Nobody knows for sure. Some say he's a creepy goblin. Or maybe a terrifying gargoyle. Or scariest of all, he may be a house cat who became spooky and spookified his home. But before he started to haunt his house, it was quiet, peaceful, a place where Nixie the dog could sleep soundly. That is, until Spooky Arlo arrived. Aww. He used to be pretty cute, actually. So precious. Honestly, he's still very cute. But also spooky! He's lurking around every corner, waiting. I guess I shouldn't say lurking, really, since you're only technically lurking if you're hiding right before attack- Oh my goodness, I was not expecting that. He sneaks. He creeps. He leaps! <laughs> right onto poor Nixie. He bats her with his paws. He chews on his family. He even chews himself. The horror. And when he's not attacking, Arlo is always looking for his next victim. Maybe even you. If you see this beast lurking in your home, you will want to run away. <laughs> but he is fast. Too fast to outrun. But do not fear. Instead, remember these simple tricks. And you might be able to escape. First, give him treats. Arlo cannot resist the taste of snacks. If he likes them, he will munch and treat you nicely. He makes a kind of funny sound when he's munching too. Seriously, this cat can be very cute. But if he doesn't like your snack gift, he'll get angry and bat at it with his paw. Oh no, he hates it. Run, run away. If that doesn't work, give him a bath. He is helpless in water. Cry all you want, spooky kitty. Oh, he seems really spooky mad. If all else fails, put him inside of a giant wheel. Well done, Nixie. And then, while he's distracted... Oh no, he left the wheel. W -w where is he? Nixie, have you seen... Oh! Hey, Arlo. I was just kidding about all that creepy monster talk. You're a very good kitty. Ah! Run away! <laughs> Actually, this kind of tickles. Happy Halloween! Mazzy Dog has a problem. Someone keeps coming into her yard every night. Someone or something. But by the time she goes outside in the morning, they're already gone. And her toys are all over the place. Who is doing this? Why are they doing it? Is it a raccoon? Is it a tiger? Mazzy needs to know. She's gonna stay up all night and wait. Mazzy, I hear them, go! Oh, she almost caught them. What did they look like? Hmm, only one stripe on the tail. Can't be a raccoon. She does have orange fur, but I'm pretty sure a tiger wouldn't have run away from you, Mazzy. Then who is it? <sighs> Mazzy, we're gonna need to get more serious. 
we'll get ourselves a hidden camera and see what we can see. Aha! It's our suspect. But who or what are you? She looks like a dog. <gasps> She's a fox! A wild fox right outside the window. She must be the one playing with Mazzy's toys. Maybe we can catch her in the act. She's roaming around, but not touching the toys? Hmm, maybe this mystery isn't over. Who could be? Oh, she has a friend. Two Fox best friends. Ah, she was waiting for him to play and chase each other and wrestle. <clears throat> Whatever that is. We solved the mystery, Mazzy. These are the two who keep messing with your toys. <laughs> Mazzy, are you mad at the foxes? Why? For playing with your toys? <laughs> Mazzy, be nice to the foxes. They're just trying to have some fun. Will you let them have fun? I know it's your backyard. That's a very good girl, Mazzy. You keep a close eye on the fox friends, but let them have the yard at night. And maybe someday you could play out there with them. Wouldn't that be something? Whenever you're ready, Mazzy. sudden movements. Oh my gosh, did you hear that? <laughs> She's coming this way. <gasps> no matter where you run or where you hide, <laughs> Molly the cockatoo will find you. <laughs> and if you hear her menacing laugh, <laughs> know that it's already too late. <laughs> Oh, okay. Maybe I'm being a little dramatic. Molly isn't some evil bird coming to gobble you up. <laughs> oh, no. Even if it seems that way. <laughs> she actually just loves a good game of hide and seek. <laughs> you found us. But sometimes this fun game can get frightening. Because when you hear... It can send shivers down your spine. But Molly isn't a bad bird. She's just very silly. You do it, Molly. You do it. In fact, she's the life of the party. Total prankster. Don't do that. <laughs> Oops, sorry, let me get my phone. <sighs> Never mind. It's just Molly pranking me. She might sound scary. But Molly is a total sweetheart. Her family adopted her when she was really little. And she was actually scared of them at first. Oh, come here! Come here! They knew if they gave her space, she'd come around. And now she's a total mush. Especially with her big brother. Actually, she's kind of obsessed with him. Molly, you get your boy? Yeah, you do. Are you so happy? From dancing to their favorite songs to cockatoo tickles. These two have a brother-bird bond that can't be broken. <laughs> and if Molly's not right by his side, 
or right on his side? <laughs> she will find a way to be. Good job. <laughs> Although Molly loves to cause a bit of mayhem, Ow! and might give you a fright, <laughs> she's really just a sweet, fluffy feather ball of fun. <laughs> Are we on our daily hike? Huh? And her family wouldn't have it any other way. I love you, Molly! <laughs> Hello! Ah! <laughs> My name's Tuna, and I have a secret. Do you want to know what it is? My parents sure do. What were you doing? You'd love to know where I go all day, wouldn't you? Oh, you think if you give me treats, I'll tell you? Nope, never gonna happen. But I'll take another treat. <laughs> I'm gone for hours at a time. Tula, come on. What are you doing? That's probably why they put a GPS tracker on me to figure it out. I'm just fascinated by this. This is what you do? But they still don't know. I'll tell you, though. Come closer. Okay, stop. That's perfect. I, Tuna the Cat, am a master at tricking people into leaving presents at my house! <laughs> How, you ask? Allow me to enlighten thee. It all begins on my front porch. I sit there, looking cute as a cucumber. I'm so adorable. People passing by can't help but visit. With a face like this, who could resist? To my devious delight, they often bring packages filled with goodies in them. What kind of goodies, you ask? That's for me to know and you to wonder. <laughs> Once they arrive, phase two begins. I distract them with my special moves. Behold, my moves! The tailocopter. The roly-poly. The wall slide. The wiggle and flop. And of course, the loud meow. Simple, but effective. By the time they're finished petting me, They've forgotten all about their things. And they leave! <laughs> Behold my stuff! This houseplant! This couch! This black brick! This thingy! But hiding my secret has become... When are you coming in? Let's just say harder to hide. Not for my parents. No. <laughs> <laughs> But from him, I think he knows. Why can't you just be like the dogs, huh? They know how to mind their own business. No matter. I'm like a ghost. Whoosh. Other than you, no one will ever know my secret. For I am Tuna, a master of deception, a shadow of shadows. Perhaps one day we shall meet, and your stuff shall become mine! <laughs> Rescuing a bat the size of a fingernail was going to be tricky. Mm -hmm. This one's very salt. So when this baby bat was found in a chimney, rescuers wondered if they were up for the challenge. They couldn't find his mother anywhere. So they told him, you're coming home with us. And they gave him a name, Gemini. Gemini seemed pretty scared and confused. He didn't know what was happening. The rescuers wanted him to go back and live on his own. 
but he was still much too small to go back to the wild just yet. So the first step was getting him some food. But how? His mouth was so tiny. The rescuers had a plan. They put milk on a small paintbrush to get him to drink. But Jim and I was like, a paintbrush? I'm a baby bat, not a piece of art. He still didn't seem to trust his rescuers. Come on, buddy. So they tried another idea, a tiny straw. And it worked. Can you hear him clicking? Yeah. That's him asking for feed. The rescuers were relieved that he trusted them enough to eat. And that's when Gemini seemed to notice the warmth of their hand. It must have reminded him of snuggling with his mom. Finally, he started to relax. For a baby bat, there's nothing quite like being warm and having a milky beard. Except maybe curling up for a nice little bat nap. As time went on, Gemini was starting to move around more in his tank. It seemed like he was realizing he had wings. Gemini was like, you mean these aren't just for crawling around with? His rescuers knew this could only mean one thing. He was ready to learn how to fly. But Gemini was nervous. He was only just getting used to drinking from a straw. Now he was supposed to soar through the air? He's not so confident. The rescuers wanted to help him feel safe. And since he seemed to love their warm hand, that would be the perfect place to start learning. Gemini must have been thinking, hey, stop moving around so much, whoa! Come on, you can do it. Go, buddy. He stretched and then gave a few flaps. Then more flaps. Are you stuck? <laughs> Oh, oh, you got this, Gemini. Almost. Soon, Gemini didn't seem nervous at all anymore. He couldn't get enough of his big bat food. Even if he still ate all his meals inside the safety of the gloved hand. And he was getting so big that he was finally ready for flight school. A place where he could meet new bat friends, practice flying, and learn how to catch food all by himself. So when the rescuers drove Gemini to the enclosure, he was already excited to show everyone how well he could fly. His rescuer was so proud watching Gemini use his wings with all of the other bats. She was sad to say goodbye, but then the most amazing thing happened. He landed on her hand. It was like Gemini wanted to let her know how happy he was. Hey, how's it going? Gemini was thankful to the rescuers for all they had done for him, but he couldn't stay long. He still had a lot of practicing to do before he would be ready to return to the wild. The rescuers couldn't believe how far Gemini had come. That tiny, fingernail-sized baby was now a happy, big bat, who would soon be ready to join the other wild bats and fly off into the night. China and her mom have a problem. Someone keeps leaving things on their doorstep. Strange things. Some wooden piece to something. I don't know. Spooky things. That's just a decoration, right? Who could be doing this? And why? Are they trying to tell us something? Doesn't seem to be a pattern here. What do you think, China? Just as stumped as us, we need to investigate. Let's set up a hidden camera to see if we can catch them in the act. Aha, here's our suspect. China? It's been you all along? Why? Are these gifts? I guess that's nice. Some construction thing, thank you. But where's all this stuff coming from? This can't be from the store. I'm pretty sure you don't have money, China. So where are you getting all this stuff? <gasps> have you been stealing these things? Oh, not talking, hmm. 
Okay, well, let's just not steal any more things, all right? China, what's this? Trash, is that what that is? Oh, thanks. Darts? Fireworks? Wood? Oh my god. What are you building? Huh? What are you building? This has gotten way out of hand. We don't want or need these gifts, China. Don't bring the stuff in here. You're going to get us in big trouble. China, you need to stop stealing things. Your mom is right. This has to stop. And if you're not going to fess up, well, we're going to follow you, China, to see what's really going on. <gasps> You've been stealing from the neighbors? Well, we are going to return these things. Sorry, neighbors. Let's leave that there for them. You might think that's the end of it, but just because she's been caught, will China stop stealing? Not a chance. Every day, her mom finds something new, and every day, she has to return it. <sighs> China, what are we going to do with you? We know you're just trying to give gifts, China. But we don't need a stolen pair of socks. Even if it was very nice of you to bring both. Lucky for you, the neighbors don't mind. Which means your cat burglar ways aren't hurting anyone. And getting little gifts for us seems to make you happy. All right, I'll admit, it is kind of fun seeing what you bring every day. Let's see what she has. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Piece of cement. Though the tiny Halloween skulls, we could do without. Just too spooky. Back where you belong. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh! Ah, ah, no. <gasps> This menace is tricky. He has one mission. Eat everything in the house. <laughs> I see lunch is going well for you. <laughs> and if you don't give him what he wants, you'll pay. He can't be stopped. Or can he? Let's see you get food all the way up here. Wait, no. the pizza! Great, you're up here, but you'll never be able to open Oh god, god, come on! <laughs> Feeling pretty proud of yourself, aren't you? Don't even think about it! Tricky! Phew, we might be safe now. Oh no! That's it! We're gonna stay in here until we're done eating. No amount of meows will get you out of there, mister. Wait, no, he can't. What? Get back here! Oh my gosh! <gasps> <laughs> Okay, if you can't be contained, maybe the food can. Welcome to your automatic feeder, Trekkie. Well, well, well. Look who's waiting patiently now. What's happening? Well, this is not how you refill a feeder, Greg. Will you get the cat out of the feeder, maybe? Oh. Well, I guess we can't blame you for this one. Okay, but this has to be your fault. You really can't be stopped. What are we gonna do with you, Trekkie? I guess we're just going to have to find a way to coexist. I think we finally found a system that works. Strap the lid down. What do you think about it, Trekkie? <laughs> Not a fan? You don't like the new setup? It's 
so determined. Don't be down, Trekkie. You can't get into everything all the time. Hey! Well, I guess this is okay. We love you, you little food fiend. Trekkie, we're not food. Paws off. Whoa, look at that big hairy spider. No, not me, him. He's actually kind of cute. I think I'm gonna call him Willy the Wolf Spider. But something's not right. He's all curled up in a ball and his legs are all tangled up in some type of garbage. He won't be able to climb with all that stuff on his legs or catch food. Wait, it looks like we've got ourselves a spider rescuer. I think they're trying to untangle him. Be careful. Did they just pull off a worm? What was that junk? Whew, this spider's a mess. But this rescuer is not gonna give up. Oh, the rescuer got some more of the stuff off. Wait, Willie, come back. Now where did you go? Oh, there you are. This will go a lot quicker if you just stay still. Hey, come back here. He can't climb, but he can still run. Now the rescuer is going to try from another angle. Oh, they're pinning the gunk down so the spider can pull himself free. That's pretty smart. It's better to let the spider do the pulling. If the rescuer did the pulling, they might accidentally pull off a leg, which would not be good. If Willie loses a leg, then it might be harder, a lot harder to catch some food. You can do it, Willie! Yes! That's another leg free. But the spider crawled away again. Whatever that stuff is, it must be pretty sticky. <gasps> What are you doing? Just stay still. <gasps> They're capturing the spider in a cup. Now that I think about it, that probably should have been the first step. Now they're moving him into a box where he can't run away. This is getting serious. I feel like I'm watching that game where you operate on people. But spiders don't have any bones or any bones actually. Willie is not making this easy. All right, let's try this again. Yes, got some. <sighs> I think spiders have three modes and three modes only. Cute, sassy, and vicious. Willie is in the middle of being sassy and vicious. <laughs> oh. Just a little bit more. Yes, they did it. Willie must be so relieved. Now the rescuer is giving him some water. I didn't know spiders needed to drink water. He's using his feelers to scoop up the water. That's pretty neat. Drink up, Willie. You earned it. He's just like, Okay, rescue's done. You can just put me outside now. So the rescuer did. Remember, if you see a spider or any other animal in trouble, do not try to rescue them by yourself. Ask an adult family member for help. I feel like this week's animal and I have a lot in common. At least eight things in common. Try not to get too scared when you finally see Ari, the spooky cat. Ah! 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 Oh, you little cutie. Ah! Ari moves so strangely, like some kind of cat crab. Look at her creep. So spooky. So strange. One moment, she's being a regular cat. And then whoosh! Scramble! Zoom! Actually, it's kind of silly. Just a funny little walk. But also spooky!
Kitty. Ari was a regular old kitty when her mom first adopted her. But the older she grew, the stranger she became. Not that it's bad to be strange. We're all a little strange sometimes. But being so spooky while she's at it and scaring us? Ari, can't you try not being spooky? Not a chance. You have to keep your eyes on Ari, or she'll find a way to attack! Ah! By now, you're probably pretty scared of Ari. And you might be thinking, well, this is just a cat. I'll just run away from her. Well, that is a silly thing to think. She is way too fast to outrun. Look at her wall flips! That's actually pretty cool. Whoa! You're like a gymnast, Ari. Or a ninja. Can you teach me how to do that? Ari? Where'd you... Ah! Attacked again! But we haven't even talked about Ari's strangest behavior. It's not the crab walks. It's not the wall flips. It's not... Whatever this is. Ari has a very peculiar best friend. You will never, ever guess who it is. Go on, guess. No, you're wrong. It's an almond. You know, like what you eat for a snack? Her best friend is an almond. Ari, now I've seen it all. What do you even do with an almond for a best friend? Go swimming? In a glass? Go on walks together? Aww. Huh. You know, you and Almond are having a lot of fun. Only someone as strange as you could be besties with a seed. Maybe I was wrong about you, Ari. Maybe you're not spooky at all. You like to do strange things. But you're also so, so sweet. You're a good little kitty. Oh no! Almond! You smushed your best friend! You are spooky! I knew it! Run away! Run away! Happy Halloween! Hey! 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 Don't you know not to get between Sparkle and her ciabattas? Who's Sparkle? Me! The cat with all the ciabattas! And what is a ciabatta? I don't even know! But I don't care! All I know is it's soft, and it's bread, and it's square! <laughs> How do they get it to be so square? What are they, wizards? When I'm with the ciabatta, it's like, I don't know. All is right in the world. Hey, what are you doing? Hands off my ciabatta! Oh. My parents just don't understand. I am the ciabatta queen. Ciabattas are only for me. The first time my parents brought ciabattas home, they had no idea what they were getting themselves into. But then again, neither did I. What are you? Something inside that thin little plastic bag was calling me. It was my first ciabatta. My parents thought, hmm, weird. They figured it was a one-time thing. No way, baby! After that, it was Jabata City, population one. Monday, Jabatas. Tuesday, Jabatas. Wednesday, Fox. Thursday, Jabatas. Friday, Jabatas. Whoa. Whoa! They're slippery little things, aren't they? But we started to have a little problem at home. Apparently, no one was getting a chance to eat the ciabattas my parents are bringing home. I just couldn't help myself. They 
thought they could trick me with any old bread. Ha! No, I don't want your croissant. Too circly. Or your hot dog bun. Way too long. How dare you try to trick me? So you, you, don't, you don't want this or this? I want ciabattas all day, every day. Real ciabattas and toy ciabattas. What a world. And there's no way you're getting these out of my furry paws. Oh, okay, great. You got one. Wow. But these are still mine. And these will be mine soon. If I can just get uh, maybe a pair of scissors. Okay, better get back to it. Bye. I said bye. Oh my God. Nanus is a bit of a grub. She doesn't like people. She doesn't like other animals. Oh, I'm so sorry. She doesn't even like her own mom. Honestly, she might not like yeah, anything at all. No, 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 no. <laughs> Nanus, they're not even bothering you. Come on. But Nanus can't dislike everything. Maybe she's just misunderstood. I mean, come on, look at that pretty kitty face. Okay, maybe not. This is gonna be trickier than I thought. She's really starting to make us nervous. Hey, little kitty. Oh my goodness. Let's try a walk, Nanus. As long as we don't run into anyone, we should be fine. So far, so good. <gasps> oh no. Hi there! What a fun thing cat. Oh, she's not. Oh, so sorry about that. <laughs> Alright, let's keep walking. Oh no! Not another cat! Manus! Slow down! Honey, no. No. Oh my goodness! Leave them alone, Nanus! Well, that walk was unsuccessful. Nanua's okay, I have to take it off of you. And Nanua's, I have to take it off of you. All right, seriously? Okay, come on, Nanua. Nanua's, let her take the leash off. And she's gone. Nanua's, there's gotta be something or someone you like. Oh! Nanua's! I want my coffee. <laughs> well, if you're gonna be mean, you stay inside while we have fun outside. Oh no! Here we go again. Be careful, be careful. What? Okay, it's okay. Nanus, come on! <laughs> Nanus, what are we gonna do with you? It's like you hate happiness, and you don't like us, and you don't want us to have fun, and you don't want to be around us, but you have to be around us to make sure we're not having fun, but you don't like being around us. And that makes you mad to have to be around us to make sure we're not having fun. But you could just leave us alone to have fun, but you don't like that, so you come around. What is it? I guess we'll never know what makes you happy, Nanus. Huh, no, don't even bother. She's pretty rude. What? What is going on right now? Nanus <laughs> loves Grandpa? Oh <laughs> Sir, what is your secret? She only likes you. Okay, this is progress. Maybe she's a happy cat now who will let us. Okay, never mind. So maybe Nanus doesn't get along with everyone and isn't the happiest kitty in the world, but that's okay. Now she's got grandpa. And that just shows that even the meanest cats still need their snuggles. <laughs> oh, hello, humans. I know why you are here. You wish to be scared, am I right? Why else would you be coming to meet me, a scary bat? Very well, then I, a spatler, will show you something really scary. Uh, wait, hang on a sec. Just got a little wing itch. Oh, there it is. Oh, that feels much better. 
Okay, as I was saying, I, Stantler, will show you exactly how frightening bats are. Because I'm assuming that's what you want? Fly away! It's pretty scary, right? Just wait till you see where I'm taking you! Try not to get too frightened. Huh? Why is this person carrying me, you ask? Well, I, um, obviously have, uh, mind-controlled her. Yes. Yes, yeah, definitely that. <laughs> no other reason. Yeah. For I am Stadler! A very scary bat! Ah! Uh, sorry, yes, you had another question? Oh, no, no, bats don't have mind control powers. Except for me! Woo! Now, follow me as we enter. Wait, hang on a second. Oh, oh my hunger. I thirst for yummy fruit. Oh, hey, avert your eyes. Uh, watching me eat is too terrifying. Okay, now I will show you to the sanctuary where I dwell with over 400 of my bat companions. Just look at all these bats relaxing in their habitat. Uh, uh, I mean, lurking in darkness. Let me introduce them. Meet the captain. His wingspan is over four feet which is big enough to hug you. I mean, get you. And here we have Enzo and Winchester. They mostly just like to hang around. Oh, uh, being scary. Ah! Ah! Oh, <laughs> those are just my stuffies. Oh, sometimes my playthings startle even me. Well, fear not, for you see, they are soft and cuddly. Oh, uh, but uh, this is not what I really wanted to show you. So, ha 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 ha. Fly away! Again! Yay. Ah, yes, thank you. That's perfect. Welcome to my tree house. I mean, inner chamber. Yeah. Where only the bravest souls dare enter. Hmm. Where did this come from? Oh, so scary. Mm, so delicious. Now, it is time to meet my very closest friends. These are probably the scariest bats who ever lived. Like Jesse. Jesse, please do something scary for us. Jesse, people are going to think all we do is hang around and nibble melons. Which is completely false. We also hang around eating all types of fruits and vegetables. And some of us even eat insects. That's kind of scary, right? Last but not least, we have my very good friend, Miss Starly. Isn't she adorable? Using her fuzzy tummy like a plate. Uh, quite the scary eater. Uh-huh. Huh? What? What's that? What? Ow, oh, it seems my friends would like a word with me. Uh, if you'll know, excuse me for just one moment. Really? You, you, you don't think they're buying it? Well, if that's the case. <clears throat> friends, you know it and I know it. <laughs> I'm not scary or creepy. None of the bats who live here are. In fact, perhaps you notice that we are actually very adorable. Because this bat sanctuary isn't a scary place. It's a special place where bats who've been rescued can heal until they're ready to go back to the wild. And for some bats, like me and my friends, it's a forever home where we can live safe, comfortable lives with people who protect and take care of us. Not because of mind control, but because of love. They even help some older bats like me fly around. That's right, I said older. Believe it or not, I am 34 years old. That is like 100 in bat years. So sometimes I need a little extra help, but just a little. Well, now that I've cleared up this misunderstanding, I know what you're thinking, Statler. If you cannot hypnotize people, how did you do that eerie, twirly eye thing? 
that, dear friends, is a very good question. <laughs> Happy Halloween! You will like and subscribe! They just can't stop hugging. Henry and Kiki may look exactly alike, but that's not why they're best friends. It's because they have a lot in common. Before Henry met Kiki, before they were wearing matching tracksuits, and wagging their tails in exactly the same way. Henry was an only dog who just lived with his mom. But something wasn't right. He'd make these noises and give his mom looks like he was trying to tell her something. His mom thought maybe he was asking for a friend. So she adopted Kiki and brought her home. Kiki was a foster dog who lived with different families and moved around a lot. She was kind of shy and nervous. Kiki wanted a forever home more than anything. The day her new mom came to get her, Kiki was wondering, would she have to move again? Or would this be her home forever? She was super nervous. But on the car ride to her new home, everything changed because Henry was there. He was so excited to have a new friend, he showed Kiki all the fun things they could do in a car. They could feel the wind in their ears, say hello to dogs on the street, take an extra cozy nap, and explore the world. Henry made Kiki feel so good, she stopped feeling nervous. She had a feeling she was going to her forever home, and that Henry was her forever friend. Since then, Henry and Kiki haven't left each other's sides. They even have a daily routine that they have to do together. They kick it off with some good morning kisses. Then they race each other around the block. It's usually a tie. They dig for treasure, say hi to the neighbors, get a big hug from mom, find the comfiest spot to nap in, and go for more car rides. They've never even had an argument. They don't even fight about where to sit in the car. Kiki has the window seat because she likes to look outside, and Henry sits close to mom because he likes to watch her drive. Once in a while, Henry also likes the window seat, but they don't even fight about that. Kiki thinks of it as a chance to lick Henry's armpits. No matter what Henry and Kiki are doing, you'll probably find them together. They're inseparable and adorable and best animal friends. Halloween is a time for mysterious new visitors, like Salem the Crow. Boy. Danny could tell there was a certain kind of magic in the air. Hi, buddy. Hi. Hi. I like you. He had been waiting a long time for a visit like this. Look who followed us up to the pasture. Can you see? Hi, Salem. Come here, buddy. There was something puzzling about this curious little crow. Hi. <laughs> hey, buddy. Do you want to come closer? Why wasn't he flying away? Why was he so mischievous? Hey, buddy. You took the whole bag, though. Can I have the bag back? Hey, bud. Um, I don't want you to... I'm nervous about you having the whole bag. Danny couldn't stop thinking about the bird. But Salem was always just out of reach. They say that bringing a shiny gift is the way to a crow's heart. Would you like um, a dime? But 
would it really work? Hi. Oh, my gosh. Patience. Hi, buddy. You can't rush a crow. And presto. <laughs> See you later, buddy. A bond had been made. Yeah. What was Danny's was Salem's. You got a friend in me. Mm. And one day, they got even closer. Whoa! Halloween magic had brought these two together. And Danny's life would be forever. He woke the baby. Okay, he woke the baby. <laughs> what do you think you're... What? What do you want? You already woke... Hi. Danny loved his new friend. He also wanted his space. You woke my baby. You woke my baby. You get a free pass, but only you. I love you so much, I'm gonna cry. But what could he do? Crows will be crows. May I have the bag? Oh, don't step on it. Hey, 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 oh. Salem, get back up. Oh. What was it that Halloween night that brought together Danny and Salem the Crow? Some would say fate, others a dime. <laughs> but whatever magic it was, Danny and Salem's lives will never be the same. <laughs> Hi, you woke my baby though. Yo, you woke my baby. Uh-oh, do you hear that music? You know what that means. It's time to strut your stuff and walk the runway. Cause it's Halloween time, y'all, and the costumes are fierce. Especially with Rory, the Halloween costume queen. And you better believe she's serving wicked looks for breakfast, lunch, and dessert. Work it, Rory! Every Halloween, Rory works with her fashion designer, Heather, AKA mom, to come up with the best costumes. I mean, look at this wardrobe. She's got wigs, headpieces, even her leash is fashionable. With Heather's help, Rory can transform into anything. A dinosaur? Check. A cute cow? Check. A Christmas wreath? Check, check, check. But despite these awesome costumes, Rory's looks keep getting overlooked. You see, each year, Rory enters every Halloween costume contest that she can. And each time, Rory loses. I know, it's absurd. Like, how does this not win? She's a seal with flippers. Like, can you even? And how can we forget last year's unicorn of the sea? Ahem, the narwhal. This isn't first place? What? Is this a joke? Like, hello, look at that bow. And don't get me started on this. A glamorous gargoyle? The wings, the horns. It looks so real. Like I could literally see this on the side of a building. But alas, this Frenchie takes home no awards. Rory, you must be so upset that you don't get the recognition you deserve. I am upset on your behalf. But then again, look at you. You seem so happy. Sure, it'd be nice to win, but I guess that's not what it's all about. It's about having fun. But I mean, seriously, I think we have to have a word with the judges. Unless, what if, <gasps> wait, what if we were the judges? Yeah, yeah. And we created our own Halloween costume contest because we can. And then Rory would win. <laughs> okay, all right, okay, places, people. Ahem. Drum roll, please. The winner of this year's Halloween costume contest that we just made up is... Rory! <gasps> Yay! Oh my, wait, Rory won! Oh my goodness! <gasps> Yay! The best in show, the Frenchie with fashion, the queen of Halloween. I always knew you would win, Rory. I just had a feeling it would happen. Clearly, these judges know what they're talking about.
Finally, Rory can take home the trophy for best costume. And now, she and Heather can have the happiest Halloween. Cole and Marmalade are totally normal cats who do totally normal cat things. They play together, take naps together, defend their house against alien robots together. Wait, what? Cole's like, quick, Marmalade, you have to go and warn the mayor. Any day now would be nice. And check out their super awesome hideout. To the cat cave! It looks like Marmalade and Cole are anything but normal cats. They're more like superheroes. And best animal friends. When Cole first met Marmalade, he knew right away that the little kitten had what it took to join his superhero team. Marmalade was curious, brave, great at hiding, and most importantly, good at making humans think he was just a normal, cute little kitten. The perfect secret identity for any superhero cat. Cole was like, stick with me, kid. I'll teach you everything I know. Cole entered superhero life early on when he scared away the masked mayhem of Pet City. And defended his home against the lizard attack of 2012. Stay away, lizard monster. Cole always wanted a partner by his side. And so, the superhero training began. Rapid reflex training. Strength training. Surprise attack training. Crazy weasel on a ball training. Box training. And even see in the dark training. Day by day, Cole watched as Marmalade grew bigger and stronger. He was so proud. Now, there's no mission too big or villain too mean for Cole and Marmalade to handle. They were ready to take on anything. Like swarms of balls, sassy squirrels, annoying ribbons, money-stealing robo-cats, Hungry sharks, giant teddy bears, evil toilet paper, mischievous mice, virtual mice, and even bubbles. Okay, come on, that just looks fun. Marmalade had not only become Cole's superhero partner, but also his friend. That's why Cole and Marmalade always make sure to take a break to hang out and do normal best friend cat stuff. And of course, they hang out with their best human friend too. He's awesome at making them cool box forts. And he always gives Cole and Marmalade plenty of things to play with. They love him a lot. Cole and Marmalade are some of the best cat superheroes in the world. But most importantly, they're also best animal friends. changed for Jasper the day Jade entered the picture. He was an only dog, 
and he needed some space. But space wasn't really Jade's thing. Jasper wasn't ready for a cat in his life because he was still figuring out how to be a dog. He had grown up in the shelter and never got a chance to be playful. He was always so serious. When his mom and dad brought him home, they thought he'd be happy to finally run around and play whenever he wanted. But it was like he didn't know what to do. Go up, boy, come on. Come on, Jasper. Come on, let's go, outside. Instead of playing with toys, he'd follow his mom into the shower. What are you doing? And wouldn't eat treats. He was so afraid of his bed, he'd sleep on a mat in the bathroom. His parents tried to teach him how to have fun. Oh, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. But they were worried. Would he ever be able to just be a dog? Then one day, they met Jade. They thought Jade could help Jasper find his wild side, as long as she'd give him some time. But as soon as she walked in, she was ready to play. Jasper was fascinated. This tiny little kitten was making noise and drinking from his bowl and sleeping on his bed. Why are you on the floor? She wasn't afraid of him at all. She wasn't afraid of anything. And that made him think he might as well join her. And it wasn't that bad. Kind of nice, actually. Jasper was starting to play. And eat treats. And play with toys. And sleep in a bed. Almost. Jasper had grown to love this tiny, bold kitten. And he was ready to be just as fun. Come here, buddy. What is it? Oh. Sit. Good boy. And it was a good thing, because soon there was a new dog in the house, Zulu. And this time, it was Jasper helping Zulu feel at home. Showing her where to sleep. Does no one in this house like to use beds? That's better. So now, Jasper knows exactly who he is. Come here. What is it, buddy? And that's worth sharing your bowl for. Help the kittens find the subscribe button.